where possible I'll try and revisit things I've shown before and very recently I showed you the uh, progress of my new asparagus bed and you can see that one or two of these asparagus spears are really tall this one's about um, nearly two foot we've picked a few spears and I think what I said at the time was that um, in the third year where you might want to start thinking about picking one or two just do that don't get carried away because you'll weaken the uh, plants under here under these glass panels um, we sewed yellow wax they're the size of small green beans um, and I'm sure I've featured them before I think it's a variety called King Horn so I'm hoping that in the next few days or certainly within this week uh, we'll get some germination going on just a couple of plantlets that I've kept aside for someone spares that um, we've managed to put to one side this area in the polytunnel um, has been turned over and is ready for planting of um, summer crops but funnily enough this new sifted soil was laden with coriander seedlings so I'm going to leave it as it is and not disturb it and the idea is that um, these seedlings that have just come up from existing seed within the soil um, obviously they've germinated because of the sudden upturn of temperatures but we'll pick some of these coriander leaves pull the plants up directly and then just plant whatever we want to plant in here I'm still to think about that Incidentally, these grass-like plants that are coming up, the gladioli, um, I got some really small gladioli palms um, from an allotment last year, an allotment uh, neighbour, and um, just planted them, and they've come up, and there's some more here, but it's going to need a while. Oh, while we're over here I'll just show you um, a while ago I did a video on growing potatoes in containers and this isn't the original um, growth that the potatoes produced even in the polytunnel we had some really cold temperatures uh, uh, a week or so ago and um, it damaged the new shoots in fact I think it was earlier than that but I left it in there I didn't move the potatoes and they've bounced back these are new plantings of potatoes so it's uh, set it back a little bit but I'm sure I'm not the only person who was caught out by this cold that we've had during April. I'll just take you over to the outside and as I've said previously those of you who've seen my channel for a while you'll remember that this is an area that we've been um, training blackberries along and just before the start of Ramadan I cleared up this area and did a bit of a tidy up job obviously it's got thorns so I wore heavy gloves and hopefully the kid my pear tree is in full bloom now and this patch here which I'd started some weeding of um, and I didn't quite get to the end is our larger patch of rhubarb and down at this end 
this one looks like it's uh, going to give us a, a, a few nice stems. Kept one rhubarb stump or root in a large container and it's looking like it's doing all right. So maybe next time I do an update we might be able to see that the stems have progressed. Just make my way out of this area. This was a deliberate sowing of coriander so that we'd have some fresh pickings. This patch here is chives that I'd sown last summer. It's looking all right and I expect that to kick on even more now that the temperatures are uh, rising. Now this boxed bed here is where I've planted um, potatoes only last week so um, we'll see how that turns out I'm not someone who normally grows potatoes but I thought I'd have a go this year there's another gooseberry here I think I can just see some gooseberries forming And here's the area where I did the demonstration of rhubarb planting. It's looking all right. I know the stems aren't huge, but um, I'm sure if I give it uh, organic feed and once it's fully established itself here, it will start producing larger stems, but nevertheless, I expect them to be quite tasty. Now, this is the variety that produces quite tangy stems, but we like that. Just under here um, is kohlrabi. I've not had massive luck with growing kohlrabi in the past, but we'll see how we get on this year. And that's just because we have pigeons that visit the area and I don't want them to start picking on the leaves. Now hopefully you'll remember the uh, recent upload on planting broad beans and these are the broad beans and you can see that they've started to produce flowers and what I've done is a follow-up planting in fact, the rest of those new ones are in the home vegetable plot. And over here, likewise, I've covered it over, is my um, kale, borry coal. So this is the black kale that I did a demonstration of uh, sowing um, Cavalanero at the time when I did the video. Um, this is the blueberry bush, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I think these are, yeah, they are. They're the flowers that are forming, and there's quite a profusion of them. So I'm hoping that that's going to mean a bumper crop of blueberries this year. Just one thing to be aware of, um, I'm going to put a finer mesh over this because what I don't want is cabbage white fly to get in and then cause havoc on these um, kale. Obviously kale is uh, a member of the cabbage family. Over here is the favoured area for growing marrows and what I'm doing is um, I've turned it over and put manure down and I'm warming the soil up. The area where I've got a, a mini orchard, um, I started to clear this up and I've de-weeded the area and I'm going to put some mulch down but you can see that I've covered it over with 
some fabric just to prevent any weeds popping back up and I'll get to the other side and crack on with that after Ramadan now this is lovely to see um, I've always talked about having patience and this plum tree has started to flower I thought I saw one or two flowers last year but this year we've got a few more flowers emerging so that gives us hope that we might get one or two plums and obviously the rest is where hopefully you've seen the video on um, pear harvest and we've got some apples down there as well I'm not going to go into that area now but that's where the apple trees are take you over here to the greenhouses before I do that I just want to show you this now these were the volunteer fox clubs that I'd um, found while I was clearing the polytunnel last year and I potted them up into small into a small pot and overwintered them and now I've just put them in the larger pot I split them up and no doubt I'll have to split them up again sometime in the future but I think looking at the stems that these are purple digitalis or purple fox clubs I won't be able to tell you what variety and so on obviously they were volunteers this mini raised bed area is where I uh, did the demonstration of how to grow daikon um, obviously the daikon has been cleared up and those of you who've got a, a keen eye might have noticed that the area looked like it was quite waterlogged it was so what I've done is I uh, put quite a, a few um, pieces of um, branches and things at the bottom and then added other layers and then put the soil back on and put some compost on and we're just waiting for the temperatures to start rising um, but in the meantime one of our favourite veg has just grown its mustard greens and we're not looking for anything substantial here this is just grown of its own accord it wasn't deliberate obviously the seeds were within the soil but what I have done is I've pushed oh there's one here I've pushed some um, Monge 2 seeds about 3 to 4 uh, centimetres in and the reason for doing that is I don't want them to be pulled out by the mice and I'm hoping that we might get a small area of Monge 2 peas Monge 2 um, means eat whole or something along those lines so those are the peas that you eat the pods and all so I'll come back and see how we get on with that as I said we were going to have a look at the greenhouses and at this time of the year you'll see a lot of covering up um, over here on the left hand side is our preferred area for growing uh, red amaranth or lal shak and I've done a video on uh, harvesting lal shak um, in the past so that's one tip for you I know people say about crop rotating um, but there is some argument also for um, thinking about where something works well and these aren't really root crops so um, I think from what I believe root crops are better rotated but anyway that's for another day's conversation but this is um, where we grow lal shak and I can't st oh actually excellent I think there's some seedlings coming up I didn't think there was just have a close up with the camera I'm hoping you can see that and I might just put the cover back on now there is some vent some ventilation here so I'm not concerned about this direct sunshine that we're getting this wonderful Sunday today but nevertheless we'll have to keep a lookout on how these seedlings get on over here again I've covered the area up um, I did a direct sowing of stem amaranth 
and if those of you who remember seeing the video on stem amaranth it was the stem amaranth that didn't get very tall but in the end I was pleased about that because the stems were substantial and most importantly tender and delicious this mini box bed or whatever you want to call it this large container is where we're going to hopefully um, establish Malabar spinach this year let's take a pop outside just before I go to the other greenhouse this is an area where we've just done some planting of onions and I don't think I mentioned this before but it's always worthwhile keeping a hold of spares I've got a gooseberry here I've got a little um, rhubarb growing and this is something I'm really interested in seeing how we get on with and I want to establish this somewhere and it's Loganbury Loganbury is one of the uh, more popular videos on the channel um, mainly due to the entertainment of Roger but Ray's passed on to me this uh, Loganbury plant and I think it'll, um, if the conditions are right, it'll uh, become a really uh, large plant. So I need to give some serious thought as to where I'm going to uh, establish it. The other greenhouse that I said I'd take you to, um, we've not done any sowings here yet. This is where we had uh, rainbow carrots not so long ago on the video on harvesting rainbow carrots. Again, um, you won't, well, I'll tell you, I was going to say you won't believe this, but um, we didn't really plant these um, mustard greens. There were already seeds in the soil. They're not that impressive, but um, as I said, as the temperatures rise, I'm going to clear this area up and... Um, look to probably establish something that's more tender there. 